All right, just like most of my projects, this one's gonna start off on aisle 28 at Home Depot, or in this case, my joiner. So what I do is I do an initial milling, um, starting at the joiner, getting two 93 edges, then a rough width at my table saw, and then I will do a rough thickness at my planer. After this is done, I'll let this wood sit for a few days and do um, let it do some final movement before I do the finish milling where I'll get them down to their final dimensions before the glue up. After all my lumber's milled, I play around with grain orientation to make sure I've got proper grain alignment, and then I lay out all my marks for my biscuit joints. I'll be using biscuits in this tabletop build, uh, mostly to keep the tabletop aligned through the glue up. Biscuits typically don't add any sort of structural strength, but they do um, aid in alignment like I'd stated previously. These are just some square calls that I'll be using to keep the tabletop elevated off my work surface while I glue them up. Now I'll be adding these upper calls which will aid in um, giving me another clamping spot so as I put the side clamps on I can put some upper and lower clamps on to keep the tabletop flat for the glue up but you're about to see here in the future um, a problem that I ran into with some major bowing. But no worries I'll show you to get this top back to being flat and we'll move on with the build. So I got my table out of the clamps here a day or two ago and realized I made a bad mistake. So anytime you work with your technical construction grade pine or fir or whatever it might be, um, you run into some issues. You, you kind of have to expect that it's going to warp on you or have some sort of bow or twist. Um, typically I like to let mine sit for a few weeks before I even use it. And then the other thing I like to do, which I did on this, is I will do an initial milling and take some small passes off, get it kind of roughly squared, let it sit for a few more days, and then come back and do a finished mill on it, which is what I did. Um, so I don't know if my wood is still too wet when I clamped it up, because what happened was when I took out a clamp, it had a nice dish to it, I mean, it was bad. Um, I, 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 I thought of different ways I could come back and maybe hide the mistake and just continue on. But after trying a few things and then looking at it, I just didn't feel um, good about throwing some screws up into it, sucking it down onto the, the table frame and calling it good because I know that's just going to make the, the matter even worse further down the road. So what I did is I actually cut it up into three pieces. Uh, this shorter, uh, narrower 5 inch piece was actually in the center here. And then I've got these two other 10 inch pieces. So a couple of them, like this one's pretty good still, but this, this one here kind of in the center here, it's got a pretty, pretty bad twist to it. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run all these back over my joiner and then run through my planer again. My only problem is my joiner is an 8 inch joiner and these two pieces are 10 inches. So I'll show you kind of how, how you can go about using a, a joiner that's not as wide as what you're needing and then coming back with your planer to kind of clean it up. I can make a sled for my planer to kind of help pick up the, the leftovers that my joiner could reach. So I thought I'd show you how to screw one up and how to fix it. Alright, so after you run your oversized board through your or over your undersized joiner, you're going to end up with a lip here. So I took probably in two passes, I took about a sixteenth, maybe a little over a sixteenth. Um, so it's essentially you're cutting a large rabbit in this piece of wood. I took my top or my bed off of my planer that I made, it just a piece of melamine, I can't even remember how long it is. Um, I've got these pieces of wood screwed on here to act as a stop so it doesn't want to shift or slide around on me. I cut it to where I'd have an eight inch piece. 
So this will be a, a reference bed for that eight inch joint that I just made on the 10 inch wide board. So I'll put that back in my planer and then I'll use that um, to finish my milling operation on this 10 inch piece of wood. All right, so now that we got this side um, planed, what we'll do, so this is flat now, is we'll flip it over and we'll run it through the planer with this side up. What that'll do is I'll take slow passes and I'll take this little lip that we uh, created earlier back at the joiner, and I'll take that down until it's completely flush with this side. Now we've taken all that weird warp, cup, and bow that this top had. I mean, it had a little bit of everything, so it was in bad shape. Um, so we're getting close. Uh, I'd say probably three or four passes on these two tops and I should be ready to um, glue them back together. So after licking my wounds from this tabletop mishap, I'll be moving on to making the frame for this office desk. I'll start by working with the end pieces which incorporate the two X-frame bracings. And here I've got the two boards and I'll start by making the first 34 degree angle which will made up with either the upper or lower apron. After that mark's made, I'll slide my gauge down and make the two 20 degree angles that will make up this half lap joint for the center of the X bracing. After that's laid out, I'll slide the gauge down once more and make a second 34 degree angle and prep to get me ready to make these cuts on my table saw. Now that I've got all the marks laid out on my X-frame pieces, it's time to come in and cut the 22 degree half lap joints that will make up this x brace. So I used a series of 8 inch passes with this template jig I made for my table saw sled. You could certainly come back and use a dado stack for this, um, but I didn't want to sacrifice my table saw sled. So after these 8 inch cuts were made, I came back and did a series of horizontal passes to clean up any of the saw kerf marks that were left behind. If you don't feel comfortable with this operation, you could certainly use some chisels and some sandpaper to achieve the same finish. So you'll notice that my lengths are a little bit off on my X braces, but don't worry. I cut these boards long and then I made my X cuts and then I came back and made them equal distances so they'll line up with my upper and lower aprons. After the upper and lower joints are cut for the X bracing, it's on to laying out for my pocket holes. I also used biscuits here to help keep the X bracing aligned with the upper and lower aprons. This isn't really necessary, but I kind of like to do it and it kind of relieves some stress when I go to glue things up.
Now I'm cutting biscuits for my rail to end piece um, glue up and this will aid in when I go to attach the rail pieces to these end pieces and preventing those rails from slipping on those joints. Um, it's a trick that I've learned and I like to use it in areas that it's tough to get clamps on. While waiting for my frame pieces to dry, I came back with some tinted epoxy and I'll use this to fill up any cracks and voids in the tabletop. After my epoxy cured for 24 hours, I came back with a hand plane and planed it flush and then did a light sanding. Then it was on to applying my pre-stain wood conditioner. This will help um, prevent blotchiness that you can usually get with pine and stain. So I applied a couple coats, let it sit for about 15 minutes and wiped off any of the excess. Then I came back and did my first coat of walnut stain. Again, I let this sit for I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes, wiped off any excess, and applied a second coat. After my stain cured for 24 hours, it was time to apply my wipe on polyurethane. I did two coats here, applied the first coat, sanded it with 220 grit sandpaper, then came back and applied a second coat. I was happy with these results, so I didn't go any further with this. Next, I was on to making my tabletop fasteners. You can order these online, sometimes they're made of metal or, or wood. I chose to make mine out of some scrap maple that I had laying around. And this will make a little bit more sense here in a few clips. So without going into too much detail, these fasteners will allow, allow you to securely fasten the top to your frame, but still allow for your seasonal wood movement that you're going to see in your house. These work by allowing you to securely fasten this top to the frame, but still let the wood move around um, with those tabs being able to fit inside those biscuit slots that I cut. desk a wrap. Um, real quick, the rough dimensions are 5 feet long by 25 inches deep by 30 inches tall. My wife wanted something simple and with a farmhouse look, so this is what we came up with. Uh, we're still undecided on the computer chair we want to go with, so that'll be something down the road. But I plan on doing a set of free plans for this for anyone interested, so I'll have a link down in my description for my email address, so shoot me an email if you're interested. And they're not currently complete yet, but as soon as I get those, those plans complete, I'd be happy to send them out to anyone that's interested. All right, well, I'll catch you on the next one.